Uh, my name's Colin Aspinall. I'm an E flat bass player. I played with Black Diet Mills Band um, from the late 69 to the early 73. Oh, very important, yeah. I mean, I just seemed to grow up with the, with the tuba, to be honest. I learned in Shaw's Salvation Army at age 10, so it just spiralled from there. I do have the Black Dyke, obviously, as everybody else does, years and years before. Um, I live over Saddleworth Way, so we used to hear Black Dyke on Whit Friday evenings. Obviously, I was very fascinated with Black Dyke. Never thought for one minute I'd aspire to join in the band. Well, that's how life treats, isn't it? Sometimes you, things come, all, come along and bite you on the bum. Yeah, yeah, I, I left Shaw Salvation Army and I was thrown into the outside band world, for want of a better word. And I knew some people who were in Wingate's, so I ended up in Wingate's band. Um, a bit of a culture shock, to say the least, from being a Salvation Army bandsman. And it was from there I ended up coming to Dyke, which really was a culture shock. I think they always have been up, the, up there, but just about that time, the late 60s, early 70s, I think they were a band to be reckoned with, and to be actually a part of it was indeed a treat. Yeah, I actually moved to Queensbury when I joined the band. I lived just up the road in a little tourist house. Um, so I, I got quite friendly with everybody in the village, and it really was. The band was very much part of the Mills fabric. Well, possibly I don't know it is now, but certainly in them days, I used to walk down to practice in the band room, and you'd meet other people walking down to practice in the band room. You know, it, you didn't necessarily practice at home. Well, I couldn't practice at home where I was, but I came here to rehearse for myself just to practice. There are a lot of good times, a lot of good times. I enjoy the tours. There are obviously always something happening with Black Dyke. You either go into a, a recording or a TV show or a broadcast or just concerts. When I say just concerts, every concert with Dyke was a, an occasion because you were playing all the big halls. It was very small concerts for want of a better word. They didn't go to get second. They'd rather be... M my, my time at the Dyke they'd have rather been 10th or 12th than be second, because at that you weren't mentioned. You either won it, we went to win, and there was no wondering. Played on the double B just there. He always had a, a lot to say, and he was quite an educated guy. I learned a lot from talking to him. Derek Jackson, who played the other double B. I must admit the bass section tended to stick together as a section. We talked a lot and we played together a lot. They, they were all decent chaps. I think Roy left for a period while I was here. Um, Wolf Eaton came. One or two other people came. I quite warm to Wolf Eaton. He was a nice chap, Wolf Eaton, in so much as he was a Salvationist, as I had been. So I, I quite warm to a lot of what he said and what he did. Yeah, I did enjoy him myself, but like I said, <coughs> I was a Salvationist, so I knew where he was coming from. But he wouldn't stand fools and he wouldn't stand arrangements that he didn't like. If it wasn't right, he just wouldn't touch it. All the time I was here, Jimmy Shepherd was the principal cornet, yeah. But obviously there was other people in the band. I mean, the sole euphonium player, John Clough. There's no wondering about John. John was a big name. The trombone players, you have Frank Berry, and then, of course, Derek Southcliffe, who eventually took over. I mean, there's been some wonderful players. Well, that's what you'd like to think. <coughs> and I think even in the present band, I mean, I've watched them. And they get so the fourth man down on the front row. He stands up and plays the solo in a big piece. And you think, well, yeah, they just seem to show the work about. I think they're proving the point that it's not just the end chairs that are good. The band is a solid band, and it always has been. I'm sure it has. You know, it, it must have. I mean, banding wasn't just a, a hobby. It genuinely is a way of life when you're playing it at this sort of level. You're rehearsing twice a week. While I was here, I was in the octet, so you're doing your concerts with the band, you're doing your jobs with the octet, you're rehearsing twice a week. Really, there's not much time for anything else. It's a very, I found it when I look back on it now, it's quite a selfish hobby, because at that time, there were no ladies allowed on the bambles, so the wives tended to stop at home a lot, and off we went to do the concerts, which was thoroughly enjoyable for us, but uh, I don't think it would work quite as well these days. I'm obviously very biased <coughs> because I've seen this band from the inside. Um, the way they work, how, how any band can ever beat them, it's, it's beyond belief at times. Because they do work, they don't go for seconds, they go to win. Now I've no doubt other bands do. 
But um, speaking from inside this band, it, it really is a way of life. Hmm. I don't really know. I think obviously the, the big mills have had a part to play with banding and the big collieries. But they're my closing now, times are changing. So it, it does make me wonder where some of the players are going to come along from. I don't think bands like Black Dyke or the people down the hill there with the purple jackets, I don't think they'll have any problem filling the band. But there's other bands I think will start to struggle. Some of the youngsters now, there's not much going on other than brass bands, isn't there? There's all the technology with computers and iPads. and I see it myself with my own grandchildren. I try and get them interested in brass, brass bands, but they'd rather be playing on an iPad these days. I think band, Black Dyke will carry on, regardless. I think some bands will suffer. Um, I just don't think there will be enough players to go around eventually. There's a lot of youth bands, and there are some hard-working youth bands, and I've been to watch good youth bands. And I think that'll be my advice for people who are starting to learn. Get in with a good youth, get a tutor if you can, a good teacher. Try and get a good youth band and come along that way. I've always enjoyed small group playing, I'll be honest. I mean, like I said, going back to the Salvation Army days, it was never a full band in the Salvation Army, albeit we had a good band. So you got used to playing with smaller ensembles. Even when I came up here into Dyke, I got with the octet, which I thoroughly enjoyed. So uh, moving to Versatile Brass, I quite enjoyed, I did enjoy the small group playing. And like you say, it does give you a chance to get up and play solos. Well, I've, I've always thought, and I still think, that good players like playing with good players. Yes. There's nothing nicer than sitting in a small ten piece where everybody can play the part. Or indeed playing in a full band where everybody can play the part. There is satisfaction in that. As you get into a smaller ten piece, I mean that to me was even more intimate and more close. And I remember a couple of occasions with ten piece when we said to the conductor, look, don't conduct this, but with a nice, slow, quiet piece. And they just listened that intently and they just played together. I mean, that was magic. Oh, enjoy it. Really enjoy it. There is pleasure to be out playing a brass instrument. I mean, we are living proof of it. I would definitely advise people to try and get a tutor and then try and play in a youth band and come along with the culture of brass banding.